The rationale of the Odyssey trial was really that lower levels of LDL cholesterol would reduce important cardiovascular events, potentially including mortality. The design was to test that hypothesis by randomizing patients who had an acute coronary syndrome one to 12 months prior to either the PCSK9 inhibitor alirucumab or to placebo, and then to follow them over hopefully several years, that was the plan. We ended up actually following them for a median of just under three years. And the goal was to see if there was an impact on cardiovascular events, including mortality. Overall, the results of the Odyssey trial were quite positive. First, let me just start with the safety, because that had been a concern, at least among some people, that very low LDL levels as achieved by PCSK9 inhibitors, especially with multi-year therapy, might lead to various problems, such as neurocognitive problems, new onset diabetes, elevations in muscle damage, elevations in liver enzymes, that sort of thing. And in fact, we didn't see any of that. The only excess was a slight excess in injection site reaction. So the drug was very well tolerated, very safe. The discontinuation rate was no higher than placebo. So overall, we've shown a very safe drug, including with multi-year therapy. There were patients receiving therapy for over three years. In fact, over 40% of the population was treated for over three years. So intermediate to long-term therapy and no safety signals identified. LDL was, of course, reduced. That's already known with this class of agents. But I will point out this was the first treat-to-target trial in the field of cholesterol lowering. The goal was to get patients within a range of LDL of 25 to 50. So there was some down titration of the alirucumab dose or discontinuation on purpose if the LDL levels got quote unquote too low, say below 15 milligrams per deciliter. And one can argue whether that was in fact a, a good part of the design or whether we should have just blasted the LDL as low as possible. But regardless, that's how the trial was set up. And indeed the trial was positive, a 15% relative risk reduction in MACE, major adverse cardiovascular events. But perhaps even more interesting than that was a lower rate of all-cause mortality in the patients randomized alirucumab versus placebo. The overall Odyssey trial was positive, and one could say that in these post-ACS patients who are already on a maximally tolerated dose of high-intensity statin, that addition of alirucumab reduces cardiovascular events, including mortality, and therefore the results apply to the entire study, use it in all these patients. And that is not scientifically incorrect. However, these drugs historically have been expensive, and that answer may not be a practical one. We did identify a subgroup, a pre-specified subgroup in the Odyssey trial, patients with a baseline LDL cholesterol greater than or equal to 100 milligrams per deciliter. And in that subgroup, which was about a third of the overall trial, there was a particularly robust risk reduction. There, there was also reduction in MACE and also reduction in mortality, but in terms of absolute terms, much larger. And probably within the range where these drugs could be cost effective. Also, in terms of just biological plausibility, clinical applicability, that seems like a particularly appealing subgroup. You see a patient a month or two after their acute coronary syndrome in the office. They're already on a good dose of a statin, perhaps azetamibe as well, but their LDL remains above 100. Those are the sort of patients where I think doctors could, should consider PCSK9 inhibition. The data for alirucumab looked very good, as I alluded to previously with respect to safety. The efficacy, I thought, looked quite good. The executive committee shared that opinion. And in this subgroup of LDL greater than or equal to 100, the absolute risk reductions were really quite large. So really, the only issue is one of cost and cost effectiveness when you get right down to it. But I imagine in terms of applicability, this is a subgroup where doctors would actually consider using PCSK9 inhibition. It might be the case there are other sorts of high-risk patients where PCSK9 inhibition is still appropriate, patients without ACS that have familial hypercholesterolemia, for example. But in terms of large patient populations where this therapy might apply, that's the subgroup that I would say we've identified from Odyssey that derives the greatest degree of absolute benefit.
I believe that, or at least I hope that Odyssey will be viewed as a landmark study that really changes practice. We have an Odyssey for the first time in the contemporary era shown that a LDL lowering strategy can reduce mortality. Of course, older trials, Stanton versus placebo, their mortality reductions, meta-analyses, and so forth. But with respect to patients who are on really great background therapy in terms of maximally tolerated statin use, in terms of other good evidence-based therapies such as high rates of ACE inhibitor use and beta blocker use and other just ACS guideline recommended therapy, even with respect to revascularization for ACS, where over 70% of these patients were revascularized better than most contemporary registries. So well-treated medically, well-treated in terms of LDL cholesterol, well-treated procedurally. On that excellent background therapy, which exceeds that of typical clinical practice, but on that excellent background therapy, we were able to show an incremental reduction in MACE, as well as a lower rate of all-cause mortality. So my hope is that that really will shift the field and further endorse the strategy of LDL reduction, specifically in this case with PCSK9 inhibition. And the data, I think, that we saw for alirukumab, the safety data in particular, hopefully will be reassuring even more broadly to some of the folks out there that still raise questions about statins and LDL reduction with that class of agents, the internet in particular ascribing all sorts of side effects to statin use, which obviously any drug could have side effects, but some of the things out there on the internet are, are really quite spurious. So hopefully these actual data will counter some of the things out there and not only be good for alirukumab, not only be good for PCSK9 inhibition, but in fact be good for the whole field of LDL reduction.